We've been talking about the radical rest offered to us in the Sabbath, and this week I want to turn our attention to the relevance of the Sabbath in the end times. And believe me, it's full of hope. So let's go ahead and get into this week's recharge. I'll say it again. I believe that the Sabbath is the most theologically dense idea in all of scripture. And over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the Sabbath and the radical rest that God offers us through the Sabbath. In part one, we talked about the way the Sabbath is an act of resistance. It's a call for us to resist by reshaping, adjusting our priorities. And it's a call for us to resist relying on ourselves. Go back and check that out. In part two, we talked about the way the Sabbath Sabbath has implications for how we treat each other. The fourth commandment calls us to both give and receive this radical rest through equity and equality for all. We talked about how the Sabbath is the great equalizer. Now, on the Sabbath, it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from, but you get to rest just as equally. You get the opportunity, the same opportunities as anyone else gets to rest, including the most privileged in society. And we talked about how God calls us to look for ways to not only receive and keep this rest for ourselves, but to give it to other people. But now I wanna build on those ideas and focus our attention on the way the Bible talks about the Sabbath in relation to the second coming of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that one day Jesus will return to take his followers home with him. That's why he promised in John 14 verses two and three that in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Such a beautiful promise from Jesus that Jesus is coming again. And the book of Revelation, when it's not being scary, I imagine other books in the New Testament are like, come on, Revelation, why you gotta be so scary? Meanwhile, Revelation is like, the truth is, the book of Revelation, when understood properly, isn't scary at all. The singular point of the book is to rest us assured that Jesus wins in the end. As a matter of fact, the full name of the book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's the message of the book. And you can find a critical detail of that message in Revelation chapter 14. The Bible tells us that God sends out three angels, really just messengers, into the world to declare this victorious message. Each of the three angels have a critical part of this overarching victorious message, but the first angel's message is fascinating. It's found in Revelation 14 verses 6 through 7, and it reads this way. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation and tribe and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth and the sea and springs of water. Now, I know what you're saying. What does this have to do with the Sabbath? Well, this critical end times message has everything to do with the Sabbath. Okay, so let's break this thing down. The first part of this text describes the message as the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and the instructions are clear. This gospel is to be preached to every nation, every tribe, every kindred, every tongue, every group of people on earth. So the first thing that you need to know is that this message has to go to everyone equally that this message doesn't discriminate, but that it is equally available to all who hear it. That in itself should remind us of the far-reaching power of God's goodness, that it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, where you are from, what you have done, or even what you haven't done. The good news of the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ is still for you. It's still reaching you. It's still seeking you. It's still being interpreted into your own language. The Bible is saying that this in 
end times message doesn't discriminate no matter who you are, which means that God comes to us and speaks to us in our human earthly languages. You see, this is why you can't convince me that God doesn't use our culture where we are in the skin that we are in to communicate the beauty of his everlasting gospel. But this Revelation 14 message also reminds me of the Sabbath. For you will remember that the Sabbath is a good news message of hope that is extended to everyone equally. For the Bible tells us that on the Sabbath, everyone is entitled to rest, regardless of your race or your gender, your socioeconomic status or your immigrant status, regardless of your creed. The Bible tells us that on the Sabbath, everyone is given an opportunity to take advantage of the radical rest that God offers, regardless of what you've done or even what you haven't done. The fourth commandment still guarantees that you you are entitled to radical rest. But this Revelation 14 message doesn't end there. This relevant end times message continues on in verse seven, where it says to fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Okay, Revelation, sounds like you're trying to take a turn towards the scary stuff. Well, don't get too caught up on the word fear. That just means to respect God. And if you are a Christian, you already know that God calls us to give glory to him. And when it says that the hour of God's judgment is come, that's really just a promise that God is coming to deliver us from our enemies. So you might be asking, okay, but what does it mean to fear God and give glory to him? Well, if you continue reading verse seven, the Bible tells us exactly what that means. It means, to worship him who made heaven and earth and sea and fountains of living water. Okay, so get this, this message, let's recap, has three parts. One, it is a call to spread the eternal, everlasting gospel of the victory that we have in Jesus. And we need to spread it to every nation and kindred and tongue and tribe and people. Two, it is a reminder that the second coming of Jesus is imminent and therefore we must respect God and give him glory. But how? That's three, by worshiping him who made heaven and earth and sea and the fountains of living water. That's the end times message of this first angel or messenger in Revelation chapter 14. And, and the beautiful thing is that it's totally consistent with the words of Jesus in other places in the Bible. It's actually the message that Jesus has entrusted to all Christians when he commands us to go ye therefore and to teach all nations. And this message here in Revelation 14 has everything to do with the Sabbath. It, it has everything to do with the fourth commandment. You see, if you look closely at Revelation chapter 14, you'll notice that the call for us to worship God who made heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of living water is actually the same exact language that God uses when he calls us to remember the Sabbath day in the fourth commandment. Let's look at that fourth commandment again in Exodus chapter 20, where it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. Verse 11 is critical. Pay attention. Here's the why. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. And he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay, the reason why we should remember the Sabbath day is because in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth 
and the sea and all that is in them. Okay, so now look again at Revelation 14 verses six and seven. It says this, then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell in the earth, to every nation and tribe, tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear or respect God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. But how? By worshiping him who made heaven and earth and sea and springs of water. There is a direct connection between this end times message and the fourth commandment. Both messages are good news declarations of hope that are explicitly for everyone. And both messages use the same language to help us understand why we must worship God. And the end times message intentionally uses the language of the fourth commandment to call us to honor God. The connection between these two messages makes it crystal clear that in the end times, there will be a group of people who honor God by remembering the Sabbath day. That there is a critical connection in these last days between honoring God and the message of the Sabbath. The Bible is making a compelling case that in the last days, those who respect God, those who honor him, those who give God glory will be Sabbath keepers, but not Sabbath keepers only. They must also, as we understand, as we have studied, they must also be Sabbath givers. Why is this so important? in the end times. Well, the truth is we're living in crazy times right now. Lots of people are wondering, is this, is the world, is the world coming to an end? Can someone just tell me? And when we examine the words of Jesus, he tells us in Matthew 24 that as we are nearing the end of time, there is one critical and key clue for us to understand that we are indeed marching to the end of time as we know it. There's a key clue for us to understand whether or not we're living in the time where this very message in Revelation 14 must go out into all the world. The clue is this, the love of many will begin to grow cold, that people will stop caring about each other, that we will become callous and apathetic, that we won't love each other anymore. I think we're living in those times right now. But then Jesus gives us hope because he says that in the midst of the coldness, there will be those who stand firm in love, those who continue to care, those who resist the urges of selfishness, those who resist the urges of apathy. Yes, those who continue to live out the ethic of the Sabbath. You see, I'm convinced that this Sabbath message, the true Sabbath message, possesses the power to overcome the coldness of this world. And the Bible makes it clear that in the end times, it is this Sabbath message, this true Sabbath message, that makes a clear distinction between those who do and those who do not worship God. But before we start thinking too highly of ourselves, because we go to church on the right day, we must ask God to examine our hearts, to reveal to us whether or not we are just Sabbath keepers, but are we also Sabbath givers? Do we truly embody the radical rest of the Sabbath in every part of our lives. This is exactly how the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ will be spread throughout the entire world to every nation, every tribe, every tongue, and every people. My prayer is that you will commit to being this kind of person, that you will commit to this kind of radical rest that you'll commit to being a Sabbath keeper, but not just a Sabbath keeper, also a Sabbath giver. Let's pray. Father God, may the rest that you have given to us in the Sabbath 
change our hearts forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, that's all we have for you this week. We pray that you were blessed by this series. That's the end of our Radical Rest series. But listen, I wanna challenge you to send this to a friend, to a family member, to a former coworker or a current coworker, someone who you think needs to know about this Radical Rest offered to us in the Sabbath. I know that they will be blessed by it. Be sure to check out part one and part two as well. And listen, what you consider giving, uh, you can give at cpcsda.org forward slash give. Your giving goes to support the ministry here at the Community Praise Church. We've been making a difference in our community, making sure that the least of these in our community are taken care of by partnering with some local nonprofits during this crazy, crazy pandemic time. Your offerings go a very, very long way to support the ministry here at CPC. So we thank you so much for giving. Again, God bless you. Thanks for journeying with us through this series on Radical Rest. Happy Sabbath and God bless.